that there's some things I hate about PowerPoint, and I figure it's kind of my duty to point them out. So here we go. Here's common PowerPoint mistakes. Uh, number one, uh, people tend to put every word they are going to say on their PowerPoint slides. Although this eliminates the need to memorize your talk, ultimately this makes your slides crowded, wordy, and boring. You will lose your audience's attention before you even reach the bottom of your uh, first slide. Please, please don't do that anymore, please. Uh, number two, most common. Uh, many people do not run spell cheek. <laughs> Big mistake. Nothing makes you look stupider than spelling errors. If it's got a red line under it, recheck the spelling. And then finally, I hate this. Uh, avoid excessive bullet pointing, only bullet key points. Too many bullet points, and your key messages will not stand out. In fact, the term bullet point comes from people firing guns at annoying presenters. Hence the bullet point. Uh, bad color schemes, not good. Clashing background and font colors can lead to distraction, confusion, headache, nausea, vomiting, and loss of bladder control. I can't stay on that one too long. Here's something I've noticed. Uh, the number of PowerPoint slides you have in your talk, uh, the less uh, useful your talk actually is. Unfortunately, uh, my presentation is right there. I've also noticed this, people love to pack data into their presentations. They shove more and more data thinking it's better, but it's not. The more data you have, the harder it is to read your slide and the effectiveness plummets. Now you can, uh, you can improve the effectiveness by adding some shading and some 3D effects and <laughs> then some second order and third order effects. And then, I know, let's add some labels. That'll help a lot. And that's, that's pretty much every marketing slide I've ever seen right there. Yeah. Then some like VP of marketing standing there going, it's real clear in Q4. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> now I'm, I'm into uh, in animation. People become animators in PowerPoint. You can have things flying all over the place and that can be good. If you're a visual learner, that will improve the effectiveness of your performance. But if you're easily distracted, more animations and people have no idea what you're talking about. They're just, wow, that is cool, wow. And there's regions here, by the way. There's the uh, simple but uh, effective region. There's the active but confusing, the uh, effective but boring, the active but ineffective, the dull but static region, the uh, busy but useless, the ADD only region, the uh, useful but amusing, the stupid but confusing, the dull triangle, the hyper triangle, the sleepy square, the dizzying pentagon, and everything else I just uh, call pointless motion. That slide right there took me an hour and a half to make right there. PowerPoint can just suck the life out of you. It's amazing. <laughs> I've also come up with this. It's a kind of a little science I've invented called font analysis. Basically, the font you choose says something about who you are as a person. There's a huge list of fonts and you choose one and that says something about you. So be careful the font you choose. For example, if you choose Courier New, uh, it happens to be my favorite, uh, you're probably organized and structured. If you choose Matisse, it means you're artistic. And if you choose Times New Roman, it means you're lazy, apathetic, and unimaginative, and you always use the default. Oh. A lot of Times New Roman people, welcome. We have some more. Uh, if you use freehand script, uh, you're a horrible speller, so you try to hide it with a hard to read font. Very smart. If you use Gothic, it means you're very pale and you wear black. And if you choose Wingdig, it means you're a nerd and you have no life. In fact, if you know what those symbols mean, you will never have a date, trust me. <laughs> Don't bother. <laughs>